In our last wisdom journey, we watched as Jesus dramatically claimed to be the light of the world. He promised to everyone who was spiritually blind that that he could give them sight. That is, that, that he could grant to them the light of eternal life. Well, their response was to pick up stones to throw at him. And we're told that Jesus hid himself from these spiritually blind men and he slipped away. Now, as we continue our chronological study through the life of Christ in these Gospels, uh, what happens next is recorded in the Gospel by John, chapter 9, where Jesus is going to reveal himself to a physically blind man, and his response is going to be very different. Verse 1 says, As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind. You need to understand the disciples were simply repeating the popular teaching of their day. If if there's sickness, well, it's punishment for personal sin. Sickness has to be somebody's fault. Beloved, we're living today in a suffering world, and, and all suffering can be traced back to the fall of mankind into sin. But every Illness someone personally experiences isn't always the result of some specific sin. Sickness or suffering is not automatically the judgment of God in a person's life. In fact, uh, this blind man's case here, Jesus says in here in verse 3, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Think about that. In other words, this man's blindness was designed by God to allow the power of Christ at this moment to be demonstrated in his life. And let me tell you, beloved, your sickness today will reveal, it can reveal, deeper truths about God's character, who Jesus is, the power of Christ in your life, whether you're healed or not. Well, this blind man is about to reveal something about Jesus that was far more important than a healing power. Here in verse 5, Jesus says, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, you might, you might recognize that expression uh, from chapter 8, where Jesus dealt with the spiritual blindness and the darkness of unbelief. Jesus promised that he could effectively cure spiritual blindness if people would follow him. Now, what's about to happen is a link between what Jesus said in chapter 8 with what he's going to do here in chapter 9. Now, follow this. If he can heal the physically blind, then he most certainly can heal the spiritually blind. Now, verse 6. Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Now, this is a rather strange command of the Lord, and we need to see it within the context of the Feast of Tabernacles, which has just concluded. During the feast, the Pool of Siloam was the place where the priest, he went over there and he filled up a pitcher with water and he he took it back to the temple altar and poured it out at the base. This was a a religious ceremony that symbolized God's power and, and God's presence. So, Jesus sends this blind man to that that same pool. Uh, The man obeys. He applies that water to his sightless eyes. And when he blinks away uh, that that watery mist, the light comes flooding in and and he can see. And And he tells all the curious onlookers that he's been healed by a man called Jesus. We're told here in verses 8 through 12. So, here's the point. If the nation Israel will trust in Jesus, the living water, they will be cured of spiritual blindness and come to see the light of everlasting life. Uh, They'll be spiritually cured. It's not going to be through a religious ceremony. It's going to be through the power of Christ. 
Well, unfortunately, the rest of this chapter here records uh, the blind responses of the Pharisees. First, uh, they cross-examine uh, this beggar who's been healed, and he tells them exactly what happened. Some of the Pharisees argue that, you know, that Jesus can't be from God because this healing took place on the Sabbath. See, according to the Pharisees, it was it was okay to practice medicine on the Sabbath if life was in danger, but this blind man's life wasn't threatened, so it was against the rules. But now they're in a fix here, verse 16 indicates, because here they are, they're all huddled up trying to figure out, you know, <laughs> what to do. And one of them raises the question here, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? Giving sight to this blind man, well, that's a messianic sign. That, that's what the Messiah was supposed to be able to do when he came. Well, some of them suggest that, well, the man wasn't really blind at all. Maybe he's just making this up. So they, they call in the beggar's parents, and they question them. Here's their response in verse 20. We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But how he now sees, we do not know. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. It was rather tragic here, but, but they don't want to get caught up in the controversy. Verse 22 tells us that they were fully aware that anybody who confessed that Jesus was the Christ, that is the anointed Messiah, uh, they're going to be put out of the synagogue. And that was a terrifying thing back then. The people were taught that to be shut out of the synagogue was to be shut out from God. But this beggar here, he, he, he's not intimidated at all when the religious leaders come back to him one final time here in verse 24. They tell the healed man to well, give glory to God. That, that's, a, that's a legal phrase, by the way, that means you tell the truth. He replies in verse 25, whether Jesus is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. And listen, they, they simply cannot get around this man's personal testimony. By the way, beloved, you, you might not have all the answers today. Maybe you feel intimidated talking to people about Christ. Uh, you do have your testimony of going from spiritual blindness to spiritual sight. Just tell people about that. Well, this beggar here is, he's actually bold. He asks these Pharisees now here in verse uh, 27, do you also want to become his disciples? <laughs> in other words, would you like to be able to see? Well, the, the Pharisees, as you can imagine, are offended by this challenge. Verse 34 says, they cast him out. That means they got rid of him. They excommunicated him from the synagogue. They made sure he can't show up and give his testimony in the next worship service. Well, I love what happens next. Verse 35, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And having found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? He answered, and who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, you've seen him. It is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Imagine, here's this lifelong beggar, a blind man from birth. And now his sight is fully restored. He, he's, he's, at least he seem, it seems like he's been abandoned by his fearful parents He's certainly attacked by the religious leaders, but Jesus goes and finds him, and he embraces him. He'd been told, you know, you can't come and worship in the synagogue any longer. Yet what do you have here? You got a worship service like no other. And this personal encounter with the Lord gives him the strength. It, it definitely will give him the strength to carry him through very difficult days ahead. G. Campbell Morgan was one of the best-known Bible teachers in his generation. To this day, he's one of my favorite authors. In 1888, he applied to enter the Wesleyan denomination as a, a minister. He had passed his written theological exams, but he still faced the test of, a, of giving a trial sermon before a, 
a, a panel of professors, scholars. Well, he did so poorly preaching that his application was rejected. Morgan uh, sent a telegram to his father with just one word, rejected. His father replied, rejected on earth, accepted in heaven. Well, let me tell you, G. Campbell Morgan would go on to become a powerful Bible teacher as well as a best-selling author. Great crowds would gather to hear him open up the scriptures. Well, this blind man Jesus is healed might be rejected on earth, but he's accepted in heaven. His faith in Jesus, the, the light of the world, is enabling him now to see spiritually as well as physically. The Pharisees, however, have chosen to remain blind to the truth. To see or not to see, let me tell you, that's the question of the ages. I wonder, what's your answer today? Well, until next time, beloved, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>